see folks when there's a threat to the ant colony they all get together and they all carry away the defenseless from the area that they sense harm and what do we do with our children folks we put them into public schools where there are microwave systems that are sterilizing them and we let them get away with doing this to our children how many years have I explained what has been going on to the children in Fullerton and how many years have you done just the opposite of what you should have done instead of carrying your children out where the harm is imminent you bring them in every morning I wanted to talk about uh, you know the schools Jeff because you know, children are, by the compulsory education laws, required to attend schools, and now they're all required to have an iPad or a Chromebook. And, uh, you know, these frequencies that are being used in the iPads and mm -hmm. these Chromebooks, this Wi-Fi frequency, there are studies that have been conducted by the military. And there are studies that have been conducted on rats, where if they apply a microwave transmitter to a rat's abdomen, Mm -hmm. for 15 minutes a day for 15 days, mm -hmm. and then they sacrifice the rat and analyze the ovarian reserves of this rat. In some cases, the rat's ovarian reserve or the egg stores in the female rat are down 70%. Now, that's a rat, and that's only two that's weeks. Now, they put, two the, weeks. They, put the, yeah. they put the iPad antenna on the bottom of the iPad for a reason. Funniest thing, huh? Funniest yeah, thing. That, Where do you put yeah. your iPad, uh, ladies? Put it right in your lap. The girls, the little girls do, and the little boys do too. Mm -hmm. These young children are putting this thing right on their reproductive organs. And if that isn't crazy enough, Jeff, if you go to the fullertonandformer.com, and if you look at the the tabs on the top, there's a tab called Apple 666. And if you click on that, mm -hmm. it will go into the symbolism of the corporations that are involved in the coming 5G, like Artemis Technology, their symbol is an inverted uterus. Artemis is also the goddess of fertility. Why would a coming 5G up-and-comer have an inverted uterus as their logo and uh, name their product after the goddess of fertility? That's a really bizarre coincidence. I mean, why don't they call it like supercell generation or something, right? No, it, it, this is right in your face. The problem is people are in a situation where they don't understand what's being done to them. We basically have upwards of 70 devices going inside a room with metal walls. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a low-powered microwave oven. Yes, folks, the ants are smarter than we are. And perhaps that is why they may be the ones that will survive. And just maybe, we won't. Wireless in schools is a sterilization agenda. Go to Apple 666 Artemis in a Google or a Yahoo search engine. And look up those words, Apple 666 Artemis. Or go to wifidangerous.com. And so what has the school board done? They've done it. They've put it in. We've held this back for a couple of years. They were in a holding pattern for several years. They've finally gone forward and said, we're going to install this stuff. What does that tell you about our elected representatives on the city council level? As a matter of fact, everybody on the city council, Bruce Whitaker, Greg Seaborn, Doug Chafee, Jan Flory, and Jennifer Fitzgerald have all ignored all of this information. Fullertoninformer.com. And they did invite someone here to speak on the other side of Jay. It was me. It's a billion-dollar boondoggle, the third mortgage on a college district that has been placed on the ballot at the behest of the board members. But that's not what I'm here to talk about tonight. The sign did the trick on that. I wasn't able to get this into the camera angle. I don't know which one's filming me right now, but item number one on presentations was Sharon Quirk Silva, and I was accused of being rude and obnoxious coming here and showing these. Let me tell you something, folks. Abortion and uh, sex education in our school is rude and obnoxious, if you ask my opinion. 
With that being said, I wanted to get into the Cancer Awareness Month and all of this discussion about being aware of cancer. Cancer is a serious problem, and it's becoming more and more prevalent. It's nonetheless becoming more and more ubiquitous as the population increases exponentially, and it seems like the cancer rates are keeping up with it. Wireless radiation, for some strange reason, is getting a pass. It is being administered to our children in the schools. It is being administered to our adults in the, the care facilities and the hospitals. Wireless radiation, ladies and gentlemen, is the same classification as lead. We had a speaker here tonight uh, talking about lead, how lead is a uh, carcinogen. It is a class 2B carcinogen. Wireless microwave radiation is a class 2B carcinogen as well. The World Health Organization designated that back in 2011. I'm not making this up. So I don't know where this disconnect is with all of the wireless proliferation and the level of denial that's taking place in our school district and the people that are responsible for its implementation are thumbing their noses at this. The volunteer of the month issue, I think it's a wonderful thing. What a gracious woman we had up here. And she talked about uh, such a wholesome community. Folks, I'm here to tell you that this community is not wholesome anymore. We have this going on. We got sex ed coming, we got forced irradiation of school children, we have people being murdered by the police, people being allegedly molested by the police, we have people that have allegedly had their lives threatened by the police, and it seems like every time there's something to do with an investigation, uh, maybe shaking down a citizen like myself, you only show up on the council days, Tuesday morning seems to be the day you like to come and ask me questions. I think that's kind of odd, but nonetheless, it doesn't really uh, warrant much more discussion, aside from the fact that, in my opinion, the police department hasn't learned its lesson. Uh, in terms of uh, what is going on in this city, the foundations of this community need to be shaken, they need to be woken up. We have uh, abortion on demand, we have uh, the molestation of children with this curriculum coming with Common Core, we have the invasion of privacy, we have complicit lackey board members that don't want to acknowledge what they're part of, and the extension has been given to them many times to do the right thing. This community is not what it used to be, ladies and gentlemen, and I would like to bring to mind the words of that woman's prayer. We have to be courageous and stand up for what is right. We can't go along to get along anymore. There's a lot on the line. The FullertonInformer.com is here to give you the other side that everybody doesn't want to tell you about. Thank you. And perhaps that is why they may be the ones that will survive. This information has been entered into the public record. This information has been presented to them personally. This information has been explained to them personally on video at city council meetings. And what have they done with it? This city is owned lock, stock, and barrel by establishment interests that have been holding this city in a death grip for years, if not decades. So what we're up against is almost an insurmountable challenge to wake people up in the face of such a chokehold that these lackeys have held on this community for decades. All I know is that if this continues, we are going to start seeing the body stacking up. Ladies and gentlemen, microwave emissions can kill people. Microwaves are a weapon. Microwave technology was developed as a weapon. They have had decades and decades to hone this down to the specific frequency, the specific power level, the specific distance to the source of their intended radiation, which in my opinion happens to be the reproductive organs. That's why the antenna is at the base of the iPad, and that's why it's conveniently held in laps by the children. And as far as the frequency that they've chosen, they have chosen 2.4 gigahertz to operate Wi-Fi on. Wi-Fi operates in the microwave spectrum. Wi-Fi operates at the exact frequency at which the maximum dielectric loss of water begins. We're 80% water, ladies and gentlemen. Nobody can dispute the fact that we're made out of water for the most part. Why do they choose the exact frequency that the water molecules start to rotate at? Why? Why did they choose that frequency to not have the FCC require a license? Let's see you set up a radio station and start broadcasting on any frequency you like. Guess what? You can't do that. You have to have a license. So why have they allowed 2.4 gigahertz the exact frequency at which the maximum dielectric loss of water begins, that's when the water molecules start rotating on their axis to line up with the oscillations in the field, 2.4 billion times a second. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a massive amount of shaking going on to our bodies. I don't care how you, I don't care how you slice this, folks. This stuff is a weapon. They could transmit data with light. I remember in my sixth grade science project back in the 70s, I got first place for a fiber optic presentation, running data through fiber optic cables. This is when I was in sixth grade. They had this stuff 40 years ago. So why are we spraying microwave radiation into classrooms at Troy High School with metal walls? Well, I can tell you right now, MJ Knorr doesn't agree with it. Joe Embriano doesn't agree with it. 
220 scientists don't agree with it. Thousands of studies that are peer-reviewed don't agree with it. But we have people on the school board who could care less. They don't care. We have people on the PTA, the PTSA. They don't care. Nobody cares. Let me tell you something. When your kid comes home with bloody noses, with headaches, with nausea, with dizziness, you're going you're gonna to attribute that to what? Oh, he's been up late doing his homework. No. You need to start looking at where the starting point for this stuff was. It was he went back to school. Does it get better when he gets home after school on the weekends? More serious note. What about sudden cardiac arrest? Why do you think these athletes are dropping dead? Ladies and gentlemen, why are there defibrillators in the schools now? Did we ever have defibrillators in the schools growing up? We never had defibrillators anywhere. You know why? Because kids weren't dropping dead. Kids would be jacked up on sugar, on Amazabas, on Coca-Cola. They'd be riding their bikes until the sun went down, ladies and gentlemen. And they were out there in third stage smog alerts doing this and the kids weren't dropping dead. Let me tell you what's happening right now. Now these kids are dropping dead in school. Perfectly healthy athletes dropping like flies out on the playground, on the basketball court. Do you have an explanation for this? Let me tell you something, folks. You would think they'd be tracking the data on this. Guess what? They're not. Let me tell you what's happening right now. There's a killing field going on in the schools. And one death is too many. And we've put the athletic director at Troy High School, Mr. Michael Silzer, on notice. And he has yet to respond on multiple occasions to the need and use in the proper training of defibrillators and how, as the athletic director, he needs to know what to look out for and the signs and symptoms of the issues that these microwave emissions can induce in these children. What has he done? Nothing. He's ignored it. I have a next door neighbor, Mr. Jesse Knowles, who's the technology guru for this high school. He just had a brain tumor cut out of the side of his head. Thank God he's okay because he has a family. He was presented with information from a parent in person. He refused to accept it. We tried to hand it to him in person. He refused to take the information. What kind of human being would refuse to accept information as it relates to the health and safety in terms of a perceived, if not potential, if not documented, if not real and eminent threat to children? How do you justify that? What kind of morality does that individual have? I will tell you, folks, he's an agent of the state, and he's doing what he's told. He's following orders against the wishes of hundreds of scientists, against the California Medical Association, and even against someone who's had the courage to come out on this, MJ Noor, who almost got elected to school board here in the last round of elections, and i got to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, the blood's going to be on all their hands. Because once somebody dies at Troy High School from microwave exposure, from sudden cardiac arrest, I can tell you who's going to end up in prison. And it's going to be everybody that we've put on notice on this, and everybody that's ignored this. The PTA, the PTSA, the teachers, the administrators, the staff, the moms and dads that drove by me every morning. I've got, your, I've got you all on camera driving by me ignoring this. You think this is some sort of a joke? It's not a joke, folks. These are our children. And what kind of human being doesn't stand up for their children? I would like to know the answer to that question. Why did you say, save nine months of your life to carry them to term and stay up years and years and years of your life caring for them when they were young just to hand them over to this meat grinder? And let me tell you something, folks. When you put a kid in a room with metal walls and microwave devices, that's a meat grinder. It may not be obvious on the outside, but what's happening to their internal organs, what's happening to them at the cellular level, is documented. The science is there. The debate is over. The science has been settled. Microwaves are a weapon. This stuff is harmful. These people that run the school district are not your friends. These teachers are not to be respected. They're cowards. They're evil. Only evil people ignore warnings as it relates to the health and safety of children. Only evil people continue to move along, to continue to move an agenda forward, in spite of the dire warnings from the experts. May God help these people if something happens to one of these children. I don't want that to happen, but because of the laws of probability, because of the reality of what we face, it's an inevitability. Ladies and gentlemen, I just hope that one child isn't your own. This is Joe Briano out in front of Troy High School. Thank you. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that's what you've been trained to do. 
to turn our back on our fellow man. You see folks, when there's a threat to the ant colony, they all get together and they all carry away the defenseless from the area that they sense harm. And what do we do with our children, folks? We put them into public schools where there are microwave systems that are sterilizing them. Troy High School in Fullerton, California has metal walls in it. A parent and I had taken a tour of the school and had determined that this school has metal walls in it. Now what they've done is they've put microwave transmitters called Wi-Fi access points inside the school classrooms and they're going to be running 35 to 40 Chromebooks per classroom as well as the children's uh, cell phones that are on all day in Wi-Fi mode because they want to get on their Instagram and play Pokemon. So you, you basically have upwards of 70 devices going inside a room with metal walls. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a low-powered microwave oven. And we let them get away with doing this to our children. How many years have I explained what has been going on to the children in Fullerton? And how many years have you done just the opposite of what you should have done? Instead of carrying your children out where the harm is imminent, you bring them in every morning. Yes, folks. The ants are smarter than we are. And perhaps that is why they may be the ones that will survive. And just maybe, we won't. Wireless in schools is a sterilization agenda. Go to Apple 666 Artemis in a Google or a Yahoo search engine and look up those words, Apple 666 Artemis. Or go to wifidangerous.com and look at what stares everyone in the face that is too obvious to ignore. May cognitive, may cognitive dissonance not overtake you. This is Joe and Brianna, folks.